Over the past few years, multicolor 3D printing has really taken off. While there were options that existed before, they were largely unreliable and required constant tinkering, especially mixing extruders. After countless headaches trying to get them working, I wrote them off and stuck with IDEX printers for all of my multicolor printing needs. Then the X1 Carbon and AMS launched, and it completely changed my perspective. With automated filament retraction, buffers, sensors, and a cutting blade, it finally made multicolor 3D printing enjoyable. It's become so popular that most large manufacturers have been releasing their own take on the AMS system. The downside, they're mostly all closed source and locked to that company's specific printers. That's where Box Turtle comes in, an open source AMS style filament changer for clippered printers. When I first saw it teased, I knew I had to build one. We finished building the LDO Box Turtle kit on stream a little over three months ago, and it took longer than expected to get it up and running on my Voron 2.4, but it's finally mostly done. In today's video, we'll be diving into Box Turtle. We'll touch a bit more on what the project is, what the building and setup process was like, and I'll share my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Let's start by taking a closer look at the project. Created by Armored Turtle, the goal of Box Turtle is to deliver a user experience as close to the AMS as possible in Vanilla Clipper. If we take a look at the unit, we can see quite a bit of that AMS style inspiration and form factor, as well as a bit in how the unit operates. It has four lanes with feeders in the front, motorized rollers for feeding and retracting filament from the printer, a hub at the back where the four lanes merge into one, and a buffer that provides the printer with feedback, making sure everything is operating correctly. A few upgrades that the Box Turtle has done that I really like are the adjustable filament rollers where you can take the back roller and place it in different slots depending on the size spool of filament you're using. The status LEDs on the front make it easy to see if a spool is loaded, actively being used, or having an issue. And the ability to adjust tension separately for each of the lanes using a thumb screw on the bottom is really nice. Thanks to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm, they now offer 21 colors of PLA Plus and 10 colors of PETG Plus. Both are available at the low price of $16.99. This is an excellent choice for anyone needing reliable and affordable materials, even for more demanding applications. Filament performance is excellent even on high-speed printers. Bulk discounts are available along with free shipping in the US when you order three or more rolls. Voxel PLA also provides high-quality 3D printer upgrades, such as the Bento Box 2-stage filter and the Bamboo Lab AMS Python, along with many others. Check out the link in the description to voxelpla.com to find out more about their high quality affordable filaments and printer upgrades. In order for Box Turtle to work, there's really three main parts. You have the main unit itself, the AFC clipper add-on running on the back end, and a tool head that's been designed for multicolor 3D printing. Each of these things are equally important to ensure smooth operation. The role Box Turtle plays is to get the requested filament from it to your tool head and to retract it all the way back, grabbing the next requested spool and repeating that process over and over. As for the tool head, there are a few requirements in order for it to be compatible. The first is to have a PTFE connector. Since Box Turtle is going to be feeding filament to and from your tool head, the last thing you want is for your Bowden tube to pop out and your print to fail. The next is a tool head filament runout sensor. The main purpose of this is to let Clipper know that the filament from Box Turtle has successfully reached your tool head, and that it's left the tool head when it's been requested to do so. If it detects an issue on any of the filament swaps, it can pause the print, letting you correct any issue that's going on, and then resume the print. And the last is a filament cutter. Each time melted filament is removed from the hot end and the tool head, there is a blob at the end of it, oftentimes with some additional strings. This blob and those strings is a great way to get a nasty clog or jam when you try to feed it back into the tool head. Using a blade, the filament is cut each time before a retraction, giving you a completely straight edge, making the process much more repeatable. There is a process called tip forming where you can work on 
dialing in some settings on your machine so that when it retracts, there is not a blob at the end of it. But this is a much more complicated process and is going to be completely unique to every hot end and every different set of hardware. There's a reason that the blade method has become so popular and it's what most manufacturers are starting to implement. The biggest trade-off to using a blade is that you are wasting more material when purging. Each time you're swapping filament, since you are cutting and leaving more filament behind, that has to be purged on every single filament swap. Then we have the AFC clipper add-on that ties everything together. This is what allows for pretty seamless multiple spool integration into clipper firmware and gives you all sorts of additional control. It even has GUI support for mainsail and clipper screen, which is something I haven't set up yet, but I'm very likely going to in the future. So what's the process like for building one of these and getting it all configured? Similar to building a Voron, you can source all the parts yourself or go with a kit. LDO provided one of their kits for my build series and it included all of the hardware I needed to get up and running. The first thing you'll need to do is print out all of the parts and there's quite a few of them. The project has a really nice guide that walks you step by step through the entire build. In the introduction section, there is a link to the STL configuration tool. Here you'll input the specifics about the hardware you're going to be using and it will spit out a zip file containing all the files that you need to print. Overall, the parts printed without issue, but I did end up having to reprint a few of them. The corner pieces inside the covers had built-in supports that I found nearly impossible to remove, and I also had a couple other pieces split on me when I went to install the little ECAS fittings. There's a big notice on top of the STL generator about tuning a profile specific for Box Turtle, and it's something I absolutely recommend doing. Tolerances on some of the pieces are very tight, so it's not a bad idea to print out a few spare pieces on maybe some of the smaller parts, or you might find yourself having to pause mid-assembly and reprint out a part or two. The actual assembly process for Box Turtle really wasn't that difficult. The instructions are solid, the 3D models are awesome to reference if you ever have any questions, and my biggest recommendation is to read each step fully before proceeding. You'll also want to make sure you print out all of the different tools for this build. These help with things like installing the ECAS fittings, cutting your PTFE to length, and just fitting the parts together correctly. Once I completed the base box turtle build, I moved on to upgrading my stealth burner with the Filamatrix mod. You can absolutely use a different tool head, but if you're already rocking the stealth burner, it seems to be the path that is recommended and all the parts for it are included also in the LDO kit. You'll mainly be reprinting a few parts. One of them is for the clockwork to extruder that adds a integrated filament runout sensor, as well as a spot at the top of it to install an ECAS fitting for the Bowden tube. There's also some changes made to the hot end mount, like installing a heat insert at the very top to give the blade a smooth, solid surface to glide on when it's cutting filament, as well as a few extra attachment points for the blade cutting arm. The only real issue I ran into with the Filamatrix upgrade came when I was installing everything back onto the carriage. It seemed like no matter what I did, every time I installed the four screws on the front of the stealth burner, the blade arm would bind up on me, which prevented it from operating correctly. I ended up having to cut a slightly shorter blade, as well as sand away a little bit of material on the inside of this printed arm mechanism for it to get consistent results. The final step was installing the AFC clipper add-on. This was really simple, and once you SSH into your Clipper host and clone the repository, you just run the install command to be guided through the rest of the process. Here you'll tell it a little bit about the specifics of your setup, and it will apply all of the best settings, as well as install the different macros. The main thing I had to configure was just telling it what pin I was using on my tool headboard for the filament runout sensor, as well as disabling a couple of the functions. The main macros you'll need to adjust are brush, cut, park, kick, and poop. Brush enables you to set up a nozzle scrubber routine, which can be really helpful to prevent any filament that is sort of leaked out or dripped during the filament swap process from making its way into your printed part. Cut is where you define the specifics of your filament cutter. For this, the only things I really had to do was tell it the X and Y location of this little arm dock, which is what engages with the filament cutter, as well as once it engages with it, how far 
and how many millimeters should it continue into it to fully compress it. Park has you choose the location inside your printer where you want the tool head to be during the filament swapping. Poop is where you define the specifics of filament purging between tool changes. This is essentially what the Bamboo Lab printers do after each swap. That creates a little squiggly extrusion of the filament that was in the hot end and the filament that it's swapping to. Kick I haven't actually looked at, but I imagine it is where you define the process of removing that bit of pooped material by either getting it into some sort of bin or a chute that he then ejects it from the printer. For the sake of keeping things simple for now, I disabled brush, kick, and poop. I figured that these things could be added whenever, and although they are nice features and would help contribute to less waste, they aren't really necessary in order for me to get this operational and gain some familiarity with the entire process. Before attempting to print, you need to run through the calibration process. Using the command AFC calibration gives you a pop-up for the required ones. The first you have to run for each of the lanes, and it measures the distance from the loading switch at the extruder to the hub. The second one you only have to run with one lane per box turtle that you have, and that measures the distance from the hub at the back all the way down to the tool head filament sensor. Once that's complete, it's time to manually swap through the filament rolls one lane at a time. For this process, you home the printer, heat up the hot end, and enter T0 into the console. This feeds the first roll from box turtle all the way down into your tool head's filament runout sensor. Then manually extrude to make sure you see filament coming out of your hot end and enter T1 into the console. If all goes well, the tool head should cut your material, do whatever macros you have enabled, retract the filament, and then load the filament from the second lane all the way back into your tool head. Repeat this process for T2 and T3, which is the third and fourth lane, and if all goes well with all of them, you can now move forward and get ready to actually print. The recommended slicer for the AFC add-on is Orca Slicer. This doesn't mean you can't use other slicers, and there is some info in there about Prusa Slicer, but the guide is centered around Orca Slicer. There's really only a handful of things you need to change in the slicer to get it up and running, and it's a relatively quick process. It also required me making some changes to my print start macro, but as long as you go through the guide from top to bottom and make all of the necessary changes, you'll be in good shape. Since I'm not using the poop and kick function, I enabled prime towers to purge all of my filament into whenever a color swap happens. This took some trial and error, and initially it wasn't purging nearly enough material between the filament changes. I was able to resolve this by going into the material setting, and increasing the minimal purge on wipe tower value found underneath the multi-material tab. Using this in combination with the flushing volumes optimization got me really consistent results, but now I'm purging too much material and need to scale it back. From my initial test prints, Box Turtle has been working really well, with the exception of my fourth lane that seems to randomly catch as it passes through the hub. Something tells me I probably just need to clean up the inside of that part a little bit, especially that specific inlet, but I'll take it apart, take a look at it, and decide whether I can get it working smoothly or if I'll go ahead and reprint that piece out. I started off with a couple of smaller flat prints just to make sure everything was working correctly before moving over to a more complex model of a two-colored dragon that had an absolute ton of filament swaps. It felt like a really good stress test and I was pleasantly surprised when I woke up the next morning, came upstairs and saw the part sitting there and it had completed without any issues. After all the time I spent getting my 2.4 back up and operational and cleaned up, seeing this print successfully was incredibly rewarding. There's still a handful of things I'd like to do, like get the nozzle brush set up as well as a bin, but before I do that, there's a few other upgrades I'm looking at. While the E3D PC that I installed has been working relatively well, it's slow, and so I'm heavily considering swapping over to a beacon probe. On top of that, LDO showed off a new tool head called Jabberwocky that's specifically designed for tool changers and printers with filament changing units. I really like the form factor and the features that I'm seeing for this tool head. And while Filamatrix is a solid solution for retrofitting a stealth burner to make it work with Box Turtle, I'm really curious to see how it compares. It's been super exciting to see this new era of filament swapping and tool changers, and because it's open source, it's only going to continue to evolve. 
even from just the short time that I built Box Turtle until now, there's been a new buffer release called Turtleneck 2.0, which has some additional features thanks to its use of Hall Effect sensors and additional expansion ports. With the growing popularity of filament changers, I have a feeling that having a filament cutter in the design of a tool head is going to become more and more common. And the idea of being able to take Box Turtle and just throw it on any clippered printer that's set up for it, it's just really cool. I look forward to seeing Box Turtle continue to evolve and I'm just blown away with what Armored Turtle has created. It's by no means plug and play, but that's sort of the nature of making something that's compatible with a wide range of hardware or wide range of machines, but it's really paved the way for the next generation of multicolor open source 3D printing. If you've gone the DIY route of building a 3D printer that's running Clipper and you enjoy modding, seeing this whole thing come together is a real treat. And that's been Box Turtle. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have a better understanding of what the Box Turtle project is, what the setup process is like, as well as some additional considerations if you plan on building one of these for your printer. I'll have a link in the description over to the GitHub, over to the documentation site, as well as a link over to where you can pick up your own kit. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments, and I highly recommend jumping over into the Box Turtle Discord to just sort of take a look around, do some reading, and ask questions from many others that have been successfully running Box Turtle. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a new video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. If you want to support the channel further, I'll have links in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys!